Morning guys. Had a question a few days ago about the differences between the vices for the Atlas Shaper and the Atlas Milling Machine. And I thought I'd take a couple minutes and cover the differences, the things are the same, and um, on both the, the vices and the rotary tables. Now I've got a rotary table for both the Shaper and the Mill. I only have vices for on the Shaper. I do not have a milling machine vise, although I've got base prints for them. Um, and I've not had my hot little hands on a milling machine vise, but there are several differences now. Originally I thought they were the same vise and they just changed the base over, but that's not the case at all. They've made quite a few changes on the, on the, um, between the shaper and the milling vices themselves. So, got, uh, got stuff set out here on the bench, let's just take a look at it and I'll tell you what I think is different and what I know is the same. Okay, so let's kind of break this down into differences of the things that I know right off the bat, and then we'll kind of talk about things that are the same. If we look at the rotary tables, this is a rotary table off of a milling machine, and it's only got two mounting lugs on here, and the locking mechanism is kind of offset. I, I don't remember if it's 20 degrees, or I don't remember exactly the... This is the rotary table for the vise. Two mounting lugs, and then it's got the key in the back. The reason it's set up this way is because there's only one key slot down the center of the table on the on the milling machine. So you can put your key in here and you can mount it. And the print for the base for the vise shows holes but they also slot them. So I've never seen a, that I can remember seeing a base for the milling machine with either the vise or the rotary table that had just holes. Every one I've ever seen has had slots in them. And small thing, I don't know that it makes any difference at all. But anyway, that's the that's the base. Now when we look at the rotary table for the shaper, the base is fits the shaper. Same thing, it's, except it's got four mounting holes and it's got the key in the center because you've got three T-slots going this way down the, the table on the shaper table. So they're set up that way. Um, you see, and I've seen one on Fleabay here just recently that's been listed several times, that they've cut out two of these slots. Or two of these bolt hold down bolts to um, so they're slotted very much like the the milling machine table would be I believe the reason for that is so they can use them on maybe a milling machine or actually any other machine table you'd want to bolt them down to it's a little more versatile to do it that way um, I personally figure they're dedicated to the to the uh, shape to the shaper or the milling machine so I leave them there I have occasionally used these tables on other milling machines um, and I just clamp them down with a with some sort of a you know external strap clamp or something like that so that's been the easiest for me the tables themselves are exactly the same it's a six inch rotary table I believe they advertise them as a six inch so they're actually five and a half but I think they consider them a six inch if I remember correctly and the tables are exactly the same. The, the spacing around the outer edges, they may be marked differently as to where they index because the bases are indexed a little bit differently from where zero to your 90 degrees are. And they're all, they're all graduated, I believe through 180 degrees is what both tables are, but they've offset where the, where the spacing is on the, on the um, bases themselves. Both of them have got two hold down bolts. You have to have a thin wrench if these are onto the table to lock the table in place solidly. Um, and it's uh, these tables are not the most versatile thing in the world. I, you know, I've got them. I occasionally use them. They have very limited use. If you want to index to a certain position and then make a cut, whether it's on the shaper or on the milling machine, they're great to lock them in place. If you want to be able to rotate them to um, put a radius on something or cut a radius slot or something it can be done it's not a real good design for that so when they start advertising these for three and four hundred dollars a piece I think they're way overpriced I think there's and I've said before I think there's other whether they're imported or used American made stuff that's actually a rotary table with a uh, worm gear and wheel in them I think they're a much better option than some of these little shapers these are good for simple milling um, or simple indexing but that's where I where I kind of put an end to it. Now the one thing that I did notice is a difference on these and I'm not really sure what it is is on this one that's on the shaper 
Of course, they've got different mountings for the index points. And these are both of these castings. This one screws on from the front on the rotary table. This one screws on from the top. Internally, they're a little bit different. This is the original one, and this is missing the detent. But it would have a detent spring and a ball down in the middle, and it will index on this cutout, on this flat here. So it will either index in or pop out to that position to unlock them, so you can rotate it. Um, both of these have the holes drilled on through for that spring and detent ball. Now this is the one that's, and I believe these are probably both original, although I could be mistaken. The one on the, the milling machine rotary table is actually threaded, and it's threaded a quarter twenty. And it threads in the lock. Um, I don't know if they did those for a reason. I don't know if this one's been modified and has a new new nut or if this is all factory. I just honestly have, I just noticed it yesterday when I was looking these over. Um, this one is more convenient. This one is probably a little more positive in its locking. But they've done that. It still has the same hole drilled all the way through so you can, or down into the, to the bottom part of it so it will have a uh, detent ball and spring. So those are the only differences I see in the mounting, but I'm not sure what's, what's proper and what's not. So that kind of covers the rotary tables. The uh, the vices, and let's get this one out of the way. So if we look at this rotary table and a factory vise, and I said before that Atlas I felt used, well I know for a fact that they used as few different castings and as few different parts as they could between the machines. And a perfect example of this is going to be the bases from the shaper for both the rotary table and the vise. They are, they came out of the same casting, I'm sure. Um, now there are a couple of differences. I see this, this cutout has been cast, but the same basic pattern would work for both of them. So I believe that's what Atlas did. I believe they probably had a, had the same casting. They probably cored this. So they may very well have had just a different core that they put in this, this same casting pattern. Because they're both virtually identical. You know, this one... When you set them this way, they're, they're both the same. This would have been machined off flat to accept this, and it's machined off flat on the back side too. But then the only other differences to them is they have this cut out on both sides, and the holes board different, but those are machining operations. So I think those are the same, the same base casting, basically, with just some modifications to them. So that's the way those go. Now the vices themselves, as I said before, I originally thought that the milling machine vise was the same vise that they used on the shaper. That's not the case. Uh, this is a, they considered a four inch vise. It's got a um, four inch jaws and I believe they claim four inch opening is what goes on it. The height off of the table or off of the base of the castings up to the top is I believe three and an eighth on both of them is what they advertise them as. The jaws are the same height um, now the milling machine vise is going to be completely different. Uh, it's only a three inch vise, I believe, and they claim a three and an eighth inch opening. And like I say, I have not had a milling machine vise in my hands to actually know that, to be able to physically compare the differences, but I think it's probably scaled accordingly. When I look at the bases, these bases are, what, about, well, they're five and a half inches across on the, the, uh, indexing portion of them on the base portion that's round. On the uh, base for the milling machine, and here's the print for that, it's only four inches across. So it's actually an inch and a half narrower in that respect. It's just got straight ears out that come and taper like you would normally see on a swivel vise base that you know you can get any place. So that vise is considerably smaller than this vise is. I think the main reason for that is when you put that on the milling machine table, if you tried to rotate it or even the back of this, I think it would foul with the, the main casting on the, on the milling machine. So they've scaled it down a little bit so you still have rotational capabilities on the, on the vise. So that's kind of the differences between them. So any questions you've got, I'll do my best to answer them. You know, but that, as I see it, is the basic differences. Um, what I did find kind of interesting when I was looking at the prints for the base is when they show the machining operations down here, they, um, they show them on the different machines and how they machined them. And 
I at this point in time don't know what those machines were because they've um, they've numbered them so the the first face turn cut slot drill and ream on machine number 90 and you go on down and it's cutting a keyway uh, on machine 341 and it gives the speeds and feeds and how they kind of figure that one of the things that I did find interesting is after these after the bases for the milling machine were face turned cut slot drill and ream on machine 90 speed high and low forward and, and then it says third so apparently third gear I'm assuming the next operation was grind bottom and top to size, and in parentheses it says 14 at once. So they, they machined a couple of these bases at the same time, 14 at once. I thought, well, that's a fairly substantial machine they're turning those on there, so it must be some sort of a surface grinder, whether it's surface or blanchard ground. A lot of, these, a lot of the bases on some of these things were blanchard ground, if you look at them. And this is uh, scuzzy, you can't really tell. I don't know if there's any differences on any of these. These are all pretty well worn. But a lot of the machines you'll see were look to be blanchard ground. Yeah, like this one. You can see see the marks across the, the base like that. So I would assume these were all slapped down on a magnetic chuck on maybe a blanchard grinder and they ground them top and bottom and that brought them within specifications for what they wanted. So. So anyway, I thought you might find that a little bit interesting about what I think I know about Atlas vices and um, rotary tables for both the shaper and the and the mill. And of course, there's things like boring tables that go on the lathe, and someplace I've got tucked away a, a boring table for that. And there's all these little different accessories. Some of them you see, some of them you don't, and um, it can be kind of interesting, especially if you're trying to research what you what you have or what you're thinking about purchasing off of flea bay that type of thing so anyway hopefully you found it somewhat useful comments suggestions leave them in the comment section for me below as always guys have a great day and thanks for taking the time to watch